Well, hello, this is Linda Carbonell from Walking the Life TV show. I'd like to welcome back Catherine Samuelson. Hello. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> so we were talking about um, what our next subject should be, and we were talking about fear and... Moving through fear. Moving fear. That's a good one, you know, because so many people have... Right, and it really hamstrings you. It's like, where does fear come... And interestingly, we had decided on this topic, and I had a dream this morning about where some of my own fear comes from. Mm. You know, down in the sub-basement of your brain or your mind, so to speak, and, and facing your fear and seeing, you know... Maybe it's not so bad, you know, and part of it, and the book, <laughs> is it struck me, and I probably need a different um, stand than this one, but one of, the, one of the things you can do is, as the angels and guides came through, if you can see it, it says, breathe deeply, breathe slowly, you can breathe through anything. Mm -hmm. So when you start to feel that panic, that fear, stop slow down. And I have a book called Fear by, um, I'm never sure if it's Thich Nhat Hanh or Thich Nhat Hanh. And it's called Fear. Mm -hmm. And he, and I was flipping through it this morning and he was like, oh, he's right on with the book. Talking about breathing, being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about that if you are fully in the present moment, you don't have fear because you're not thinking about the future, you're not thinking about the past. Absolutely. And the one thing I can identify with moving through fear, I think, is, you know, because obviously I've had mental illness most of my life, and one particular was agoraphobia, and it was just such a big fear to go out that door. I mean, I fought it and fought it and fought it. And I can remember the day that I succeeded and I got all the way down to the park here and I was trying to think, how did I do that? And what I came up with is that along the way, I stopped and noticed what was in the road, you know, like there was a feather, there was a butterfly that I decided I was going to follow, you know, things like that. Right. So if I'm you not thinking about the, the fear. You, exactly. you, instead of fighting it, mm -hmm. you were moving through it. Right. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes I think when we fight those emotions, it becomes more rigid, it becomes more internalized, breathe it, face it, you know, and then find a way to move around it or through it. Yeah, and it's often common that you'll hear people say that they're, they have such a fear that they could never do that. And um, I think that if we do face our fears, but then find a way that we can overcome, mm -hmm. you know, that we can go just a little bit beyond what we think we can't, and then we can. Right, and it's, it's, and for me it was interesting, it was about fear of not being good enough, fear of, you know, whatever, you know, and if, if you realize that you as a human being are not perfect. I used to ride the commuter rail in the Chicago area, and one of the women I rode with said, only Allah is perfect. <laughs> you know, and one of the meditations in the book is, uh, in the eyes of the universe, at this moment, you are perfect for who you are. Mm -hmm. And as I tell clients, if you've had a snit, you're the perfect snit haver. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. you think that people, though, they, they bound their fears a lot about what other people think, think. or right. they don't want to go be because what's other people going to see in them, they're afraid of that. And, and so it becomes a, 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 um, a chase around for that, is that I can't succeed enough so that people will see me in the way that I want to see, the want right. them to it's see Right, it's turning me. the language around. Exactly. I would, you know, when you go, well, I would do this, but blah, blah, blah. Exactly, yeah. And when you, when you change it to, I am going to do this so that then, so you change your, the language. It's not to please anybody else, it's, it's for right. yourself, obviously. And if you think, so what's the worst thing if it happens if I, if I mess up? At least I tried it. I've learned something. Mm -hmm. You don't have success without failure. Exactly, yeah. And not only that, but I think it's a lot of baby steps too, you know, trying, 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 just keep right. trying. And, you know, day by day, maybe right. do a little more. Right. right, and as you say, so if you have something you want to accomplish, you want to start a business, mm -hmm. and you're afraid yeah. of it, well, the first thing is to do is, is my heart's passion in this thing? Mm -hmm. 
or is I'm just going to do it to make a lot of money? Well, you know, you've got to have some passion about it. Yeah. I've done a, some book talks about the book, and one of the things is you've got to love your book. If you're going to, if you're going to write it, you have to love it. Mm -hmm. You have to have a passion for it. And so you do things step by step, you know, so then you can break it down. And that's as a life coach, I can help you break those steps down and help you move forward through them. It's like, and sometimes you have to say, okay, I'm going to put this step aside for now because life has happened. Yep. Yeah. But that, for me, it was, it's always, it's always there. It's always there. And I think a lot of failure, I think, I think about the times that I tried and I couldn't, and I couldn't, and I, I had these words in my brain that I will mm. never be able to, or I will never be a good person enough for other people to think anything good about myself. And that's where the, the practice of changing the language, changing yes. the story. And it became, for me, it became more of what type of person do you want to be? Um, what can you do to better love yourself? You know, what is it that is important to you? Mm. And it's that deep breathing you, and being oh, right yeah, that's a big here. One. You know, think about when you are engaged in an activity that you really love. It focuses down. You don't think about the past. You don't exactly. think about the future. You're just right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to be. And so I think, obviously, I'm not a therapist. Um, you know, as a life coach, there's many things that I'm capable of helping you with, but not... <laughs> I'm not a therapist, but it seems to me that when you start to feel that panic, if you start some deep breathing, you know, and try to then figure out what triggered the panic, you know, and what about that thing is tied up with panic with you, mm -hmm. and then and I. I would probably suggest them be see a therapist, you know, if I was well, working with them. Well, for me, you know, therapy was pretty intense when I was younger. And then as I got older, it was more about, you know, my excitement of finding ways that I can help myself. And that's one of the things. I no longer have to live back there. I don't have to live it. I don't have to talk about it. I don't have anything to do there. All I need to do is work on myself to get to the next step that I want to get to. Right, and, and, and you've learned that it's not something to be feared. Exactly. But there's so many people that do have that fear, Catherine. They, and they're convinced because they've been told, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And this is the and, way it's and always going it, it could even be, and I was thinking about it, it's not anybody in my family said, oh, you can't do this, or you mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's sometimes you pick up other people's... Stuff, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Their emotions, their fears. They may not talk about it directly, but children absorb those things. Yeah, they do. And I had a life coach, you were talking about that. I had a life coaching client who wanted to do a certain business, and everybody in the family was saying, you That's can't. Just <laughs> That's just my king. That's just my king. You can't do that. And my first question to her is, like, why not? It didn't mean she could, mm. but she needed to stop paying attention to those other voices. Exactly, yep. And taking on their fear. Mm -hmm. And she now has the business she wants to have. And I think, too, it's a lot of uh, people we think that are authorities, like teachers, doctors, um, uh, people in business, your boss, and all of that, that put certain, either put certain expectations on you or say, okay, you're not capable of that. You're not capable to do that. And I think that's where we stay stuck in our minds. Right, and, and it's so fine. And so if they right. say no, then we automatically tell ourselves, okay, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. Right. And, and that's so why try. then you try to find the people in your life who say, you can. well, you can, you know, but maybe you have to take, do it in a different way yeah. than you, you know, think you, you know. Right. The path isn't necessarily straight, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Sometimes you have to work around something. Or you have to work harder. But if you have that desire mm -hmm. to change, and that's what you want to do, then you're the only person who knows yourself best, that how you're comfortable doing that. If you just, instead of mm -hmm. listening to others, and you're, you're listening to your own self, I know I can. Even though they say I can't, I know I can. And it's just like You changing. just might have to find a different way to do it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's like when, remember I shared with you that I couldn't read or write, and I was told that I never would, and then being presented with, do you want to learn? I'm like, 
well, I can't, but being presented with a way that I could if I worked at it, you know what I mean? And then actually feeling the success of that was greater than the feeling of they said I couldn't, so I'm stuck where I couldn't. Instead, instead of finding the success that no matter mm -hmm. how much hard work it took, I could. Right, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can do that. Do you think so? Yeah. I think a lot of people, if they change their, their mindset from hearing the I call tapes. it changing the language, changing the story. Yeah, exactly. And I know your book can be helpful with that too, because I've used a lot of it with the different meditations and getting out of it, what I wanted to get out of it, and the writing exercises and really paying attention to that. You know, because a lot of it for me is when I'm writing, I get certain words. And uh, I say, well, that's what I'm supposed to pay attention to. I just got to tell you that this book has uh, really made a difference in my life. Well, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I can't, I can't thank you enough for writing it. And um, Well, with a lot of help from them. Exactly. <laughs> from yeah. the angels and guides, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you were meant to write it, you know. And like me, you just said, well... Okay. I'm do it, yeah. It take it's like, me some are, time. like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Might take me some time, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, I like that. You know, for for me too is inspiring, empowering people to see that they can do anything that they really want to do. I think that's important. You know? Again, with the, with to use one of the words I used to use, caveat that you might have to find a different way yep. to achieve it than someone else. Right. You have to find what works for you, not what works for someone else. That's right, yeah. But you can find that because you, you know yourself better than anybody, and you can find what would be helpful for yourself. You can, you know, if, that, if that's what you want. Which is kind of like, I guess I like to say when I first decided I was going to do Walk into Life, how scared I was. How scared that I was. fear came up. Oh, yes. It was like I had to my best friend. I said, you have to come with me and sit right beside me. Cause I had, but you know, she was there for me, you know. So it part right of moving to, through the fear can be finding those people who provide well, the support. Well, support you, yeah. Stand beside you. But I think everybody has had fear. I've had fear. <laughs> Talk about, oh, my God, you mean I'm going to go argue in front of the appellate court? <laughs> yeah. Talk about a little Yeah. Anxiety, so. fear. Yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. I do this? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's the fear of the unknown, what's gonna happen yeah. when you know, is this gonna go good or I'm, another example too is that you know when you get services and you have to fill out these applications and in your mind you're wondering, is this am I going to be able to get this or am I going to be able to have I forgotten anything? Do I need to send anything else? And that's a simple fear of not knowing if you did it right or not. Not being perfect at it. Exactly. Or in most cases, they will tell you, you forgot this piece of information. Right, and then you can just send it. But a lot of people panic over the fact that they don't have it. They don't know exactly, you know. Like I have friends that have lost their social security card or their IDs or, you know, whatever, paperwork, important paperwork, you know. And the solution is you just call, ask for another one, you know? Well, Social Security might be a little bit harder than that, but... Yeah, that's true. That is, yeah. So you have to make sure you... But you have time to get them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, did that. I had to do anything. that once while working in downtown Chicago. So it's like, oh, good, going to the Social Security office in downtown Chicago. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know... Um, I know Ted, when my husband, when he retired, that was a big fear for him because he worked the majority of his life, you know, mm -hmm. part-time, but doing something. So when, when it was time to retire, it was like, what am I going to do with myself now, you know? Well, and I remember my dad moving towards that, and I'm like, well, Dad, you know, what is it you want to do after you retire, you know? But he, he went to retirement, right, he slowed down and... Right. Well, I think that it was great for, for Ted to actually find where he wanted to, what he wanted to do and where he wanted to, to do, you know. One of his biggest things is always helping me, so he, he's got this thing where now he does the housework or he does, you know, good things for mm -hmm. other people even. 
somebody needed an air conditioner taken out or taken in or put in or whatever and and that's his way of feeling like he's being useful it's when people need him he's there and that's I think terrific. that's important for him and again it's moving through that fear of What's what am I going to do? What am I going to have to do? Yeah. You know, what's the money situation yeah. going to be like? You and know? it's all sorted itself out. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know. So again, going back to Tich or Tick, not Han, it's being in this present moment. Being fully who you are. Mm -hmm. And I've had days where I, the perfect me has been a screw-up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then but what do you do? <laughs> you move through it. Yeah. And again, I think it's not fighting something, it's moving through it. And I'm not quite sure how to describe the difference, but it feels different to me. Yeah. I think you stop struggling with it. Yeah. And you stop, oh my God, I should be this other thing. Exactly, yeah. Instead of, because acceptance is not, acknowledgement is not necessarily accepting things as they are. If that makes sense. Yeah. You can acknowledge, okay, this is the situation. Now I just have to breathe and find my way through it. Yeah. Yeah. Does, if that makes sense. No, no, it totally does because, you know, one thing when you panic is you can't think. You can't think, you can't think, and you just get all up tight and your hands start to shake or whatever. And your first thought is, this is going to be done now. It's got to do right now. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have to do something to fix this right now. When actually, like you said, if you sit back and realize this isn't going to be done like right like you want it right now. It's like you get so you, you get yeah. the letter that you missed a, a bill payment on a Saturday. You, what are you going to do? do? But you know, instead of panicking about it that moment and having fear that something you know you're going to lose a service or right, it's like <sighs> yeah, breathe. And, and you know, actually, I found when I panic, I can't think about anything. When you panic, you can't think. No, your mind races you. Exactly, yeah. You're thinking about all the horrible, terrible, horrible things, things that are going to happen. happen. Absolutely. And most of the time, things I've worried about haven't happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're well, human, and we do that. Yeah. It's like making a batch of cookies for a friend, and they come out terrible. You have to make another batch. <laughs> or you think you have to make another <laughs> batch. When actually you could just give them the ones that you made, and they're not going to tell you they're bad because they don't want to hurt your feelings. So just give them the messed up cookies. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless they're burnt to a crisp. Well, then you could scrape them, I guess. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little much, Linda. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd think if they're your friends, they're not going to hurt your feelings anyway. I've never done that, though. So that's just an example, you know. If, if you're panicking, yeah, I mean, you know, I got time to make another batch of cookies or whatever. Go to the store and buy some and put them on the plate and say, these are for me. <laughs> Same thing. At least you wouldn't be throwing them messed up cookies, you know, I guess, you know. Right. So there you just sit down and you think about, you know, and the, and the thing is, if you're making them cookies, is are you doing it as a gift? Do you have to do it today? Right. 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 Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm working on pictures that I'm drawing for my sister's. Kathy's the, I'm drawing her one for Mother's Day, and then my sister Janet's birthday. So I'm try, I was trying to think in my mind, what am I going to draw, you know? And I'm, I'm just penciling things down. I said, ah, I don't like that, I don't like that. So I kept doing that, and then I finally put it down. So oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow or whatever. But a couple of hours later, I saw the picture of my brain, and I said, wow, that's the one I want to draw, you know? Right. And then I had, so I knew what I wanted to draw at that time, but I, I guess I didn't know when I was starting to panic. Again, you know, and, and I'm sure there's a difference definitionally between panic and fear, but I think they're really interrelated somehow. Well, yeah, because when you panic, it's, yeah, because when, when you panic, it's just the fear of not getting into whatever it is. It's the fear of not being able to succeed in it when you panic, you know, or if, say somebody that's got PTSD like me are triggered, you know, and then it's an automatic panic that something like that can happen again. But again, with PTSD, you can work through that and actually get better. The more you do it, with me anyway, the more I did it, the more mm -hmm. comfortable I got, the more less scary it was, the more less I panicked. And, and more you, less when you, anxiety. When you learned what it was. Exactly. That and, triggered it, yeah. And you learned that you could move through this fear of it. Mm -hmm. 
But I think it would be really hard for some people to be able to succeed in doing something like that. But like you said, your book really is helpful with that. But also knowing that this isn't something that's just going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. It's a process. You know? Yeah. And and you practice, practice. and going out and finding the the, the help that you need. Exactly. Whether well, it's therapy, doctors, or, or whatever it is that can be helpful right. to you. Absolutely. Right. And there may be some people that a PTSD is so deeply entrenched that they won't make the progress that you do. Right. So they have to learn to deal with it in the way that they can. Right. They have to learn how to, or, or, or even the way that they are dealing with it right now is, is fine for them, you know? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they're not going to find a way to make it a little bit easier for them, for themselves, or, mm -hmm. or what makes them better. Or I whatever. just don't want to be, us to be in a position of saying to people, oh, if you have PTSD, you can get over it. Right. No, I'm not saying that to anybody. I'm saying for mm -hmm. myself only. Right. Only for myself, but that's because. I know what I need. I know what triggered me. I guess I knew what triggered me, and I knew not only what triggered me, but when I decided, when I, when I overcame mm -hmm. the triggers that were really bad for me. For me, it was a lot of going out, going out, going out, and going out, and getting a little more comfortable going out. You know, right. a and little that, more comfortable that, being around you people. You know that you weren't going to be walking out the door. You weren't going to get hit by a car. Or exactly. But not only that, but I think people need to realize that. For me, PTSD is a long, lifelong thing, you know. So it didn't happen yesterday or, or right. you know, today that I was able to overcome. It took many years, you know, and it took me much research, much therapy, and all of that. But I, the only reason I was able to succeed is because that's what I, I decided that I was going to do, and I found a way for myself to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that I don't still get triggered because you do, but you know how to handle it better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's some people who make the choice to not get better. Right. Exactly. And there's some people who. It's too well, much for them. It's just too much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's it's okay. so it's so interesting to me how much of stuff can be fear-based. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at girls that uh, go on diets, binge diets, or whatever, the biggest fear is that they're going to gain an ounce of weight, you know, or or whatever it happens to be, whether they overeat in the fear of that people won't accept them anyway, so why not just keep eating what it likes because it tastes good, you know? Um, I know I'm a, I'm a pro, I have a problem with that. Either that or I just like the way things taste. It was funny because we had a birthday party yesterday, and. Uh, this girl's husband made this wonderful Boston cream cake. Oh my gosh. And I was just like in heaven when I <laughs> took a bite of it. And I'm like, wow, I forgot what this tasted like. You know, I never had a cake like that, but I thought it was good. So I indulged myself and had a piece, you know. And uh, so, you know, it, it's a work in progress. It's not something that just goes away. You know, I can't sit here and say that I, that I don't still like sweets or food or whatever, because obviously I do and obviously I still eat it. But I'm accepting of it, you know. I'm accepting of, you know, and I'm also accepting that when I'm ready, I can change this, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm ready. And that's what, you know, we should say to everybody is that when you're ready, you know. And it's being in the present moment, deep breathing, mm -hmm. finding the first little step to move through the fear. Yep. And again, from the reading I've done, I think particularly in Buddhism, it's, Struggle causes suffering. Yeah. So acknowledging it, but moving th through it, so not you're not fighting with it. You're finding what works for you. So kind of like letting uh, letting that anxiety, stopping that anxiety to breathe, just long enough to take a breath and breathe, and giving your I, I would think giving your mind a rest so that you can mm -hmm. function and think. Clearly. Come back to the present moment. Right, because you know, obviously, when you're panicking, you, it's not right. there. But I, again, um, as a life coach, I would say I'm not a therapist, and so if you're really st striving, struggling with fear and panic, I would say a therapist is who you need. Right, and you know, therapists are, are great. They're great. I mean, I've had one the majority of my life, and it's really helped me. You know, so it depends on on you, but yeah, they can be very, very helpful 
But you have yeah. to be willing to participate in the therapy. Right, exactly. You can't go in and think it's just going to be right. you know, easy. Or do it because somebody's urged you to do it and you're really not wanting right. to do it. Yeah. It only really works. And life coaching only really works if you do the work. Right. Yeah, and I could kind of see where they would be kind of similar but not similar. Right. You know, I can kind of see where therapy is very important for people that you know, need to process something and need to uh, find ways mm -hmm. to cope, you know. And with life coaching, as you're saying, it's more about this is how, how you can do this part in your life or, or this is what you need to do to change your life. Right, and I had a client who, one of the pieces of homework I gave her, as I call it, you know, you have things that you give clients to do to help them move forward, and it raised an issue for her and I said I can't help you with that I'm not you know you need a therapist for that mm -hmm. and sometimes that's your role as a life coach or as a psychic to say mmm you need therapy yeah and that but that therapy is not a bad thing that, no a lot of people do think it is but I'm a firm believer that it's a helpful tool I think you know we still denigrate that some we do system. I mean there's still a stigma around mental illness and therapists and psychiatrists and whatever, there's still that stigma. But you know, it's, it's people that are open and, and honest and be able to say that those things have helped them. I've seen therapists off and on. Yeah. And I sometimes mean, you don't need to be, you don't need to be schizophrenic, you right. don't need to be paranoid. You, sometimes you just need somebody to help you sort out issues. Exactly. And that's what therapy's all about. And, and so, I know we're going to be doing another you know, show, and I know it's about time to wrap up. But maybe we could do like a thinking about what the next show might be about. You know? Well, you had a good idea about going through the book. That's what I was thinking. You know, like start with uh, the first meditation, actually show what the process would be like. I think that would be a really good idea. And okay. Be, yeah. So why don't we do that next time? So anyway, this is Linda Carbonell. We are saying goodbye for walking through life today. But myself and Catherine will be back um, next month. Sure. Yeah. We'll work it out somehow. Yeah, we will. So uh, remember, uh, next time we're going to be actually taking the steps, some of the steps in the books that actually help you understand how to uh, meditate and do this, some of the exercises. So we'll see you next time on Walking Through Life. Bye-bye. And how to lose And how